All right then guys, what I've done before this video was basically removing every necessary application that I had. And what I would like to do is to reinstall everything together so we're all on the same page. Before we continue on, if you like my content and you want to see more, there's a red button down below which says subscribe. So if you want to see more, just click on it and otherwise enjoy the video. In order to work with the Laravel framework, we need to pass a few requirements. So let's start off by doing that. The first thing that I need to add is Homebrew. And Homebrew can be seen as a package manager that makes it very easy to install and update applications on a MacBook. So let's hop to Google Chrome. Let's go to google.com. And right in the search bar, let's search for Homebrew. Let's click on the brew.sh. And right here, you immediately see how we could install it on a MacBook. So let's click on the icon on the top right corner of the install Homebrew. You can see that it turned green. What we need to do right now is to go to our terminal. There are two ways how we could open our terminal. The first way is basically clicking on the icon well, in our name bar terminal right here and let's click on it. But that's not what I want. Let me close it. As a programmer, I want to use my mouse pad or mouse as little as possible. And I want you to make a habit of it to do the same exact thing. What I would like you to do is to hit the command spacebar, and you can see that the search bar just appeared on the screen, which allows us to search for whatever we want. So right now, let's say that we want to search for terminal. And you can see that our terminal has been opened without even touching our mouse pad. So let's make it a little bit bigger. And my terminal might look different than yours, but we will install plugins for our terminal later on. Now in our terminal, let's command V, the homebrew installation that we just copied. Let's enter our password, press enter. And you can see that the script will be installed. This may take a while, so pause the video and come back when your installation is done. All right then guys, my installation has been done and I hope yours is too. I won't go in depth about homebrew because that could be a course apart, but I basically want to continue on right now with installing Laravel on our laptop or PC. But before we continue on, I want to see which PHP version we have running. That can be done by writing down PHP space double dash version. Let's hit enter. And let me zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, I'm running on PHP 7.3.11. If you do not see anything, you can basically run brew install PHP, which will automatically install PHP version 7.4 for you. I'll try it to see what the output is. So let's hit enter. And you can see that it's downloading PHP. And this might take a while, so I will cut it out once again. Pause the video and come back when your download is done. My installation has been done, so let's clear it. And let's do php-v, which also stands for version. So this is more like a shortcut of the version. So let's do that. Well, mine is still on 7.3, so let's quit the terminal. Let's open the terminal again to see if there are any differences. Zoom in. Let's say php-v. And you can see that my PHP is running on 7.4 right now. But you might have noticed that it's not necessary to install PHP whenever you have a older version running. So instead, you could basically say brew upgrade PHP which will do the same exact thing, but way faster. All right then, now that our PHP version is set up, we can continue on by installing our MySQL. And this can be done in the same exact way as how we just installed our PHP. So let's write down brew, install, MySQL. That's it, enter. And once again, this may also take a while. So what I would recommend you to do is to pause the video once again, and I will see you back in a second. All right then, one more thing before we continue on is, well, we need to tell Brew that it needs to start MySQL. And that can be done by saying Brew services start MySQL. This might take a second, probably not too long. All right, successfully started MySQL. Now, in order to see if this works, we need to write down MySQL space dash u root space dash p. Let's hit enter. Let's hit our password. Let's hit enter. And you can see that we're not in the, well, greater than symbol anymore. So in our root directory, 
but we now have entered MySQL. And right here, we're able to perform all types of SQL things. So let's say show databases. And you can see all the databases that I have right now. And to exit MySQL, you basically need to write down exit, semicolon. Let's hit enter, and we're gone. Let's write down clear. And this was it for this video where we installed Homebrew, PHP, and MySQL in order to work with Laravel. Now that we have installed Homebrew, PHP, and MySQL, I want to focus on installing Composer and Laravel. If you are new to any type of PHP framework, Composer will not make sense to you yet. But believe me, it is an awesome feature when you start understanding it, and it takes time for you to understand it. Like I said, the next thing that we need is Composer, because Laravel is installed through Composer. So let's open the browser, and inside our Google search bar, let's just Google for Composer. It's the getcomposer.org, so let's click on it. When you get on the website, you immediately see a download button, so let's click on it. And right here, you can see the download commands that we need. So what we need to do is to copy it, and you can copy all four lines, and you basically need to paste it right inside your terminal. I haven't deleted my composer because, well, honestly, it's a pain in the ass, but I will just paste it right here to see what happens. And as you can see, our composer version 1.10.15 is successfully installed. To see if this works, we can try to install Laravel on our composer by basically saying composer global require Laravel forward slash installer. And that's it, enter. And you can see that changes are being made in our composer directory. And this might take a second, so pause the video and I'll see you back in a minute. All right then. What we've basically done is sending a message to Composer saying that it needs to pull in everything of the Laravel installer. And as you can see, our dependencies have been pulled in. Now the next thing that we need to do is to place Composer system wide vendor bin directory in our path. And this may sound difficult and I did struggle doing this a little bit the first time. So just bear with me and give me a minute. We need to place our vendor bin directory inside our global path. So inside our terminal, let's echo out dollar sign pad. And as you could see, a weird pad just appeared on our screen. Now we need to create a pad. So basically, if your bash RC hidden file already exists, you can write down vim tilde forward slash dot bash RC to go inside our bash RC. But I have deleted mine. So what I need to do is to write down nano space tilde forward slash dot bash rc. Let's hit enter. As you could see, my bash rc does not exist and it just created a new file. So what we need to add right here is export path is equal to, well, double quotes. Inside our double quotes variable home forward slash dot composer forward slash vendor forward slash bin colon variable path. Now, in order to save something inside the nano, we basically need to press Control X. Now you're getting a pop-up message. Well, do you want to save it? And let's basically write down Y. Let's hit Enter. And we have been pulled out of our bash RC. To see if this works, let's write down source tilde dash bash RC again. All right. And let's write down Laravel. And you can see that our Laravel installation has been completed.